All right, so, you know, we got week five coming up. You know, we got the best of the best going over there in London. So that game coming on at 9.30 Sunday, just, you know, a scheduling warning. That game coming on at 9.30 in the morning on Sunday. We got the New York Jets and the Falcons. Um, the big game we got on NBC, we got a rematch of the uh, AFC Championship, the Buffalo Bills versus the Kansas City Chiefs. So with that said, Jay, what else are you looking forward to with the uh, Sunday and Monday action? Hey, folks. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I know we got an early London startup, but uh, I, I wouldn't – I'm not going to hold nobody – I ain't going to hold it against nobody if y'all sleep in on that one. <laughs> you know, you had a long Saturday night. You stayed up. You know, God forbid you stayed up and watched some late Pac-12 action. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> hey, hit the snooze button for a little bit. I don't think – I think you'll survive that one. Uh, but, you know, outside of that, I think – um. I'm looking at Denver and Pittsburgh. That's one that I'll have an eye on. I'm seeing um, I'm seeing two teams on you know <clears throat> opposite ends of the spectrum right now. I see Denver as an uh, as a team on the ascent. They were they weren't very good against uh, Baltimore last week, particularly offensively. We know Teddy Bridgewater knocked knocked out the game with the concussion. Um, he is he is going to start if he clears that uh, concussion protocol, which I think would be in their benefit if he can do that, because uh, Drew Locke was not very good at all in relief. And then, but it, but then on the flip side, Pittsburgh. It looks like they're on the cl- the decline right now. <clears throat> but uh, Denver's only favored by one point in this game. It is at Heinz Field. So does Pittsburgh? And I know it's getting late out here because it's one and three. But it already feels like Pittsburgh getting too far behind. Um, I think this is the game. If Pittsburgh's don't make a stand and start to right the ship, so to speak, um, it's got to be this one. I do think Denver though is going to get it done if Teddy Bridgewater plays. If Drew Locke is coming out there, I think it gets a little bit more dicey uh, just with the way uh, he doesn't doesn't take care of the football. Uh, I th- Miami and Tampa, I think that stands out a little to me. I think Tampa's, uh, Tampa's got some injury concerns right now. This secondary is just a mess. Anytime you're out here, you know, uh, you've called up Richard Sherman from off the street, uh, incorporated, uh, fresh off whatever charges that he's dealing with. And then you got, don't get me started on Ross Cockrell, for God's sake. But uh, when you got Carlton Davis and uh, Murphy Bunting and Jamel Dean, uh, the whole cornerback room is off. Antoine Winfield, he ain't playing in this game either. So they got problems all over the place in the secondary. Also, I think Gronk's going to miss another game. So um, I, Tampa Bay, I think this is still a game uh, they should win because, the you know, I believe Jacoby Brissett is still in line to start another game for Tua. And Tampa Bay is a 10-point favorite in this game. So I think Tampa will win the game. But they are vulnerable um, at, at certain positional groups, particularly in the secondary. So, you know, they, they could there could be a lot of points scored in that one. And I think a couple more stand out. I'll just, I'll just stick with the Saints and uh, the old football team. And I'm particularly interested in the, in the Saints portion of this. I'd like to know who the Saints are at this point. We've seen week one, they good. Week two, they're not good. Week three, they good. Week four, not good. Like, which, who are the Saints? Like, we got some, like, we out here losing to the Giants last week. I, and I'm just, I'm just, I, I was really hoping to start a weekly subject where we could just, you know, just pull up the state and say, okay, time for the where are you New York segment where we say, will New York get their first win this week? And then both teams just somehow get a win thanks to the Titans and the Saints substandard play. But seriously, who, who are the New Orleans Saints? Like, are they the team that just blitz the uh, Packers in week one, or are they, they the team that, uh, you know, they can't they can't beat the Giants, and they're they getting lit up by Daniel Jones? So I'd like to know the answer to that question. I'm leaning, I'm leaning towards they're the team that uh, has won two games. They get Washington. Washington, you know, is still the Taylor Haneke show. He's been decent. But I think the Saints' defense is good enough. Listen, if they can lay the wood to Aaron Rodgers, and maybe he wasn't like all there in week one, but they, they should be able to get it done. As always, Jameis Winston turnovers. They got to get out. Alvin Kamara right now. I mean, he, he he's just shy of 300 yards rushing so far, not not averaging four yards a carry. They got to get this guy going. Uh, you know, outside of that, there, there's a lot of great a uh, lot of great other matchups, but uh, I think you're uh, looks like you're gonna take those for us. Go ahead, brother. Okay. All right. So then you know we're gonna start in this one o'clock window. Um, I'm looking at the Green Bay Packers versus Cincinnati Bengals, folks. And um, right here you heard it first. I'm calling the Cincinnati Bengals in this one. Um, here's the deal. Uh, Green Bay defense 
It seems like they're going to go into, the, you know, this matchup without that number one corner, Yair um, Alexander. Um, so you're going to be down your number one corner. The catch you got on the other side, Sidney King, shall I say more, we've seen what he can do when the lights get the brightest, <laughs> give up a whole lot of plays. Yeah. Um, and then you got the backup coming in behind Yair. And listen, Joe Burrow, he's starting to get, he seems he's getting his rhythm. And he got some guys to throw it to. T. Higgins coming back off injury um, this Sunday. And you know what Jamar Chase doing. You know what Ty, uh, Tyler Boyd is doing. Um, no Joe Mixon. No Joe Mixon. But listen, I, I think they got enough. Um, I think they got enough where I'm, I'm feeling very confident about Cincinnati. I think Green Bay is going to have a hard time stopping them. And then I think on the other side, the Bengals defense ain't like they don't wow you. But that defensive line does cause a lot of problems. And then if it's a position group that can get Aaron Rodgers rattled, it's when he see them big boys up front pushing his boys somewhat backwards. Right. Um, that gets him rattled. And then on top of that, when he gets rattled, he has to ask himself, hey, 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 where you at, Devontae? Yeah, hey, where you at, baby? Oh, oh, oh. And it's a sack. So um, the, I say that to say um, – He's not much confident in these other guys. So if you get him to rolling, get him to thinking, I think this, uh, the Bengals can have um, a lot of success there. So I'm taking the Bengals for the upset. And then the next game I want to talk about, the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Carolina Panthers. Here's the deal. Um, we've seen what the Panthers did over the week. They replaced um, you know, J.C. Horn with, um, uh, with Stephon Gilmore. There we go. I couldn't get his name out. Stephon Gilmore, and on top of that, they had already signed CJ, the free agent CJ Henderson. So they, listen, for what for what is worth, the the Panthers are making this very clear. They think this season they're a playoff contender, and they're going for it. I like what they're, they're going for. It. They lost their first round pick. They say, hey, who who out there? Who, who the best we can get up out there? Oh oh, CJ Henderson. Oh cool cool cool. All right, now we got a guy. Oh what? Stephon Gilmore. Oh you want a six rounder? Sign me up. Go ahead and go get them. They go get them. They bring stuff on Gilmore, which I think is a steal. Evidently, though, with that trade, something tells me Carolina must agree that they can extend him to a long-term contract sometime in the near future. So we'll see how that go. I know the NFL players don't have much, you know, much say so in what they do as you know the NBA per se, but. Just the way this went down tells me I wouldn't be surprised if you see some type of extension of some sort for um, Gilmore. So, with that said, though, all that great goodness, I'm going with the Eagles. Here's the deal. Um, the Eagles, I thought, played Kansas City very, very well um, oh, this last week. It was – I don't know, man. The, the reference in that game kind of got had me a little shook. It seemed like every time the Eagles scored a touchdown, I mean, I'm not saying like they're the most disciplined team or anything, but it was like touchdown, touchdown, first down, touchdown. I was like, man, the Eagles can't catch a break. They can't catch, they literally, what is going on here? Um, If Jalen Hurts would have got the credit that he deserved, the man would have threw for like five touchdowns. Like, they was going off, but they, I don't know what's going on with that referee now. So, and Philadelphia was at home. Like, what? Come on, what? I thought we were supposed to get the home cookie, baby. But I guess not. Um. So, with that said, I thought Philadelphia showed me enough in that game. Sam Donald, he missing his boy CMC in the back. Um, and I think you could put more pressure on him because, you know, he, he looking for um, DJ Moore most of the time. He got he got the speech to Robert Anderson. But I, I, I'm going to be real. Um, listen, that bag up, he ain't getting it done. They, they need Christian McCaffrey back like yesterday. Um, and he's cool, but he's just not enough. He's not – or should I say he's not up to standard enough that where Sam Donald could continue doing what he was doing when he had Christian McCaffrey. I say that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take, yeah, I'm gonna take the Eagles in that one in the upset. And then I'm down in the four o'clock window. I'm looking at the Cleveland Browns versus the um, Los Angeles Chargers. Here's the deal. We, we know what Justin Herbert been doing. He's been bringing in the good since he's been in the league. I, I love to see it. However, I think this Sunday he's going to be running for his life because as good as that offensive line is, you telling me you're going to put this rookie against Miles Garrett. I'm taking Miles Garrett. Um, and then you you talking about the other side of the line. Listen, 
Cleveland been kind of sleepwalking a little bit. I'm not going to lie. The defense hasn't really played to what I thought I was going to see. However, I think this is going to be one of the most intimidating defenses that Justin Herbert is going to deal with. And I think they have the athletes to make the likes of Mike Williams work for what he's going to get. Keenan Allen work for what he's going to get. And, and Austin Eckler will be probably their best weapon in this game. But I got a feeling Cleveland might have something for that. So, with that said, Justin Herbert is going to have to earn it. If if the Chargers win this game, Justin Herbert is going to really have to – he's going to put the team out there on his back. I think that Cleveland defense is built to give the Chargers a very hard time. I'm taking Cleveland in, in this one. But I'm going to say this. Also, Cleveland's offense. I think a Bay, Baker Mayfield might have the game that we waiting on him to have. He hasn't really had that game this season where he's just like – Man, he's been efficient, but he hasn't been eye popping. He hasn't been box office. Um, I think this game, even though the Chargers, Chargers got a very good pass rush, uh, Bosa, they, hey, these boys out here playing very good. However, I also think Cleveland got an offensive line that can stone them a little bit. So I'm, I'm gonna take Cleveland in this one. I think Cleveland gonna uh, have Justin Herbert running, running for his life in this one. And then the main event, the big game, you know, as I call it, um, Sunday night, NBC, Chris Collinworth, Al Michaels, you know what it is. Sunday night football. All right, so we got the Chiefs, two and a half point favorites, even though they haven't brought defense since the preseason. And then going against the Bills, like I said, it's a rematch of the AFC Championship game. Yes, folks, I'm also, I'm calling the Bills in this one. I, I think, listen, Josh Allen, as long as he had that confidence and no who he is and what their team is, I think they have a very good chance of keeping up with with the Chiefs and beating the Chiefs. I just they have to come into the stadium with that conference because the game is in arrow, Arrowhead, so they're gonna need to come in there with the confidence that they can beat the Chiefs. And if they do that, they will beat the Chiefs because I think the Buffalo Bills are a better team than the Chiefs right now. Um, because. Yeah, okay, you want to give me Patrick Mahomes? Okay, Patrick Mahomes is better than Josh Allen. I ain't going to argue that. You know, I'm not going to argue that. If you want to tell me Tyreek Hill is better than Stephon Diggs, okay, cool. But Stephon Diggs is better than anybody else Kansas City got. And I like Travis Kelsey. I really do. But, I mean, listen, I, I don't think the guy, you know, um, knocks over there. I don't think he's like roadkill. And then off, the offensive line, we're going to compare the offensive lines? I think that's a, a win for Buffalo in, in, in the offensive line department. Then we go to defense. I know we ain't going to talk about defense. We're talking defense. So we know who got the better overall defense. I mean, even if you take the big money guys out of the situation, we know who got the better uh, the defense. So, you know, um, if you want to go head coaching, I give Andy Reid that, that, that check in the box over so McDermott, but – when it's all said and done, I think Buffalo comes in now. They do what they got to do. They beat their chest. They beat Kansas City, and they make a statement to – they make a claim at the statement of being the number one team in the AFC.